Hello and welcome to this brand new Blend of Thought. Today I want to show you how to set up a colour at the. Uh, ha how to set up a chroma key. Okay, just watch. Uh, so, actually, I'm going to open a pre existing blend. Hi. Okie dokie. Auto save. Armage. Uh, I'll probably cut this out, so. Uh, yeah. Okay, welcome to this brand new Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a green colour in your background. Now, there are two ways to do this. One is a really dumb way, is by adding a. 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 get to it, a plane, Rx, to rotate it on the 90 degrees on the. Uh, yeah. And uh, over here, set a simple diffuse, the green. the. Uh, and we can augment the metallic, but we have shadows casting, it's bad, there's light interaction. Now, yes, you may say there's one way to do it, set it as background. Now it has no light interaction, set the green colour by removing the R and the blue and blue. Now we have a perfect green background that's looking really cool. So there's a bloody thing in the way, we don't want that. We want it. What if we have animations, we want things to move around, we don't want colliding with like things colliding with it. This is bad. So we don't want to animate this moving either. And what happens if, if we have a pan and camera? There's a camera pan. What happens if the camera goes like... GZ. Ah, I'm on a French keyboard. I'm not used to this. Uh, well, what I, you know what I mean? What happens if the camera moves around the scene? You have to make it like an entire freaking... I don't know. <laughs> I because it's got less... Thing is, it's got less um, edges, it's faster to render, so this is a background image, but that's just stupid! We don't want that, we want a simple way to set up a green background. So, what we're going to do, we're going to use post processing. We're going to use the compositing tab. Now, when we go here, I've already set this up, oops, uh, <laughs> forget you see anything. Uh, let's just add this into here, set the viewer node, a simple scene up. Go to render tab. Oop. That. Three, two, one. Oh no. That. Boom. We have a really bad scene where I move the camera, but nobody cares because this is a tutorial. Now, what we need to do is to set transparent so we get rid of all the sky data here because we don't want that. That's not part of the scene. That's just lighting data. So, uh, now we can re render with F12. Wait a second, because I enabled ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space refractions to get this better refraction and reflection. Where are we about reflection? The hot fashion. <coughs> refraction, refraction, and reflection, and ambient occlusion looking, which is obviously the white, the bloom, which is the brightness, and the reflections, which is obviously. Yeah, it's in the name, you know, don't need to turn that one. Now we go to composite and tap, and you can see you can fit it, and uh, yeah, it's all move or just V or Alt V. You've probably heard that already. And, sorry, we go Shift A and add a merge node. But since we're Blender, nothing works like any other program because this is Blender. We use an alpha. Over, which is a merge node, and since this is blunt, I have we've got the view node and these two, so we can see what we're doing. Ah, it's gone white. Why is that? Well, because Blender, for some reason, defaults to setting the render less to the bottom, and so we've got a white plain color on top, which is weird. 95% of the time, you're gonna need to reverse this. So, thanks, Blender. It's not a big deal, but you know, a little thing. <laughs> and uh, convert you pre multipliers often useful, like green screen in effect. It like, tweaks your colors in contrast to give something a bit more nice looking. And um, yeah, this is pretty good. Why did I plug it into the top? I'm losing my mind. Okay, now we've got this color slide here. And we can select our color. Now it's not affecting the scene, and even when it's rigged and moving, this will constantly be behind there. It will be constantly green as long as we check transparency, even when we render out an entire animation. 
And uh, as you can, Jesus Christ, I'm really good, good at this. I just ran in the fixed spot in green. That's almost zeroed out. So I can just manually go into the RGB tab because it's defaulted to HSV. We go to the RGB tab. We set these red and blue values to zero, and you can adjust the scene um, brightness if you have a uh, another light or greenish looking element in your scene, but if you do then you probably wouldn't want the chroma key anyway, you probably want to select a blue value yeah, which is, I've, I've done blue chroma videos before, it's, it's not uncommon uh, especially when you're filming like plants or, or trees we often use blue, so don't be afraid to use different colours I've even used red before <laughs> And um, yeah, this is pretty much it. Let's go to the render tab. I'll just quickly show you how to what the settings I usually use. H.264 and MP4, which is um, date saving mode. <laughs> don't ask me to explain. It helps. I know how, but I don't like explaining because I'm bad at it. And um, that's why I got so many, so many subscribers. So many because they all come to see me um, fail. Let's select an awesome name for the file output. We got our frames per second. This is my ratio, my new wallpaper ratio. Because if you didn't know already, I'm making an app. I've made an app. I've released an app for Android for Blender fans, and it's got all loads of wallpapers in it. <laughs> it's so bad. I got an app with so many, so many, so many. Okay, I'm gonna stop it. Just go down with it. <laughs> Thank you. No, I don't. Get out of here. Bye.